also uh, we're also going to talk this hour about this this problem um, with mistakenly giving citizenship to 850 some immigrants who were supposed to be deported instead. And this is a recent Homeland Security report that came out that showed some of these glitches in our systems. And you just sit back and scratch your head. You think, how in the world could that happen? Uh, but it's happened again. I mean, it, it, it just speaks to how poorly we handle immigration in this country and why we have got to fix uh, that problem. Um, let me get to Joshua Meserve. He's our uh, guest right now from Heritage. He's a policy, policy analyst uh, for Africa and the Middle East there at the Heritage Foundation. Uh, Joshua, how are you? Doing well. How are you? Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Uh, pretty close, Missouri. Missouri. Okay, very good. I appreciate that, and I appreciate you giving us some time today. Let's talk about this situation in Syria. It seems to be disintegrating. It does. Uh, you you reference the attack on the aid convoy, um, and of course, as as you know, that's just one part of what has turned into well, really has been a mess for years now. Um, and there's just no end in sight. Things continue to get worse. They continue to disintegrate, as you say. Um, and this has ramifications for the United States, for the region, uh, for the world. Uh, it's, you know, the, this refugee crisis that Europe is experiencing, that the Middle East is experiencing, is being driven by this disintegrating situation in Syria. Uh, the, the war there has radicalized, um, has drawn in radicals from from. Uh, all over the world and continues to radicalize people. So uh, something needs to be done, um, but uh, few options and none very hopeful at the moment. Yeah, it, uh, today the president said at the UN that he doesn't see any, he doesn't see a military path to clean this up. He thinks they have to use diplomacy to end the violence. That you know, we, we've we've gone there before, uh, where we've drawn lines in the sand, and they've continually been crossed. It's it, my perception of the problem is that we've consistently backed away from enforcing anything. Yes, I think so. Uh, I think the the larger problem really has been uh, that there never really was a strategy from this administration for Syria. The it was clear from the beginning that um, the administration was simply. Uh, had no idea what to do in Syria. They were paralyzed. Uh, I think they were operating under this um, this ethos of don't do stupid stuff, which was a reaction to what they saw as the previous administration's overreaches in foreign policy. Mm -hmm. But don't do stupid stuff is a slogan. It's, it's not a strategy. So when very difficult situations like Syria happen, they were completely overmatched, and they remain overmatched. Well, you know... I I guess I question whether or not we're ever really going to get help from Russia. I, I'm not sure that um, – what's Putin's stake in this? Can you explain that? Sure. I, I, I share your skepticism that we'll ever get help from Russia. Uh, U.S. and Russian interests are inimical, uh, uh, inimical I would say, in uh, the Middle East. They're just diametrically opposed. So what Russia wants, um, Bashar al-Assad, who is the president, of course, of Syria – is essentially a Russian client. Uh, he uh, has strong ties with the Russians and the Iranians, uh, which are the two regimes primarily propping up Assad. And they want to maintain, so Russia wants to maintain that relationship. It gives them a foothold into the Middle East. It allows them to project some power and have influence in a very critical region of the world. Uh, there's also a port that the, the Russians use uh, on the Mediterranean. And, of course, Russia, like all countries, uh, is concerned with having a warm water port. So the Mediterranean port is, is critical to them. Um, so really it's, it's about influence and about power. Um, and unfortunately, as this has unfolded, as this crisis has unfolded, Russia's influence in the region has grown dramatically because of because of the crisis, because of U.S. missteps, because of the vacuum that, um, you know, a, a lack of U.S. leadership has left, um, you know, Russia has, has happily stepped into that void. Uh, they have. We're talking to Joshua Maservi from the Heritage Foundation. Uh, is, is this a trap for these current uh, candidates for president? I mean, if Donald Trump says that, 
you know, he would take care of this problem, and that means uh, throwing American troops on the ground there to try to fix it. Um, I, you know, I, I haven't heard him say that for sure, but he seems to think that he could he could handle this more directly than Barack Obama. I know you guys don't get involved in politics on these issues, uh, but do, is it your belief that more feet on the ground is what fixes this? I think there is going to be a – there's no silver bullet. Uh, so, you know, sending in a bunch of U.S. troops uh, is not going to be the ultimate solution. Um, but there is going to have to be a military component to this. There's also going to have to be a diplomatic component. Right. I think uh, right now the diplomacy is a joke, frankly, uh, to expect Russia to honor these ceasefires that we've been signing with them, that they've agreed to, to expect Syria, uh, the Assad regime, to honor them is foolishness. They've, they have no reason to. Um, they're just a ploy. Um, and they have no intention of being um, responsible global actors. They're just strictly pursuing their own interests uh, in that country. So, I, I, as I said, I, there's no silver bullet. It has to be a whole host of actions that we take, and it has to start with strategy. I, I, just, I keep going back to this where we really need a coherent plan, and I, I have yet to see one. <laughs> right. And and this administration's had plenty of years to to come up with something like that. Uh, Joshua Maservi, thank you for your time. I'll direct people to uh, heritage.org to read your thoughts on this situation and more. Great. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, appreciate uh, getting you on here. You know, it's just one of those subjects that's kind of gotten, other than the Aleppo comment with uh, Gary Johnson, it's kind of been overshadowed by some of the events in our own country, the election most surely, uh, but uh, also the terrorist attacks. In the meanwhile, all this is going on, an aid convoy is attacked over there. Um, 31 trucks were hit. 18 of the 31 trucks were hit. Nobody's claimed responsibility. It's not clear if it's an airstrike. And um, uh, some people are already blaming the Syrian regime for doing it, but, you know, for now they're just going to shut it down. They're going to shut down the aid, and that's a shame because there are certainly people in need. But but it 